Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Now, welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video where I will be discussing two topics. The first being how The Athletic recently commented on how if Chelsea get the ban lifted, transfer ban lifted in January, they'll be looking to strengthen free positions. I'll be telling you guys those positions and my opinion on whether I think Chelsea need to strengthen those opin opinions? Positions. But I'll be giving opinions on positions talking and how I potentially think that threatens certain players etc. Also I'll be talking about Eden Hazard's secret meeting in 2018 after the World Cup how he knew already he was going to Real Madrid. Mm. But before we do get into today's video I want to remind you there to subscribe to Football Therapy as I upload Chelsea content every single day daily that's right man so subscribe to football therapy make sure you do hit the bell notifications icon and like the video man do me a favor let's go all right then let's start with the Eden Hazard story because it's interesting I know this is in the past but it offers a little bit of I don't know it illuminates the situation and how things went down for Chelsea fans so it's always after the transfer happens or after a little bit of time the truth comes out right this is always the case in football something happens and when everything settles the dust settles the sort of details of the truth come out and that seems to be the case with the Eden Hazard transfer to Real Madrid oh sorry Real Madrid <laughs> We know in 2018 in Russia, he did make those comments, you know, I love Chelsea, it's been great, it might be time for a new challenge. And everyone's like, wow, he really wants to go to Madrid, but then he spent another season at Chelsea. And a few fans actually hoped, wow, he might stay, he might love the club. Maurizio Sarri's coming to town, he plays attacking football, look what he did to Dries Mertens at Napoli. He could do that to Hazard, everyone could stay, happy times. But news reports are saying now that Eden Hazard actually got Chelsea Football Club's blessing to go and have a meeting with Florentino Perez, the head of uh, Real Madrid. He sat down with them, they sat down with Chelsea, and they came to an agreement back then that next summer, when Hazard would only have 12 months left on his contract, that they would agree a transfer. And they agreed the fee then, apparently, it was 89 million, rising up to 150 million. Loads and loads of money. Obviously, Hazard has always echoed the sentiment of how he loves Chelsea Football Club and he would only leave Chelsea for Madrid and ultimately things worked out that way the club obviously gave Hazard his blessing and after a while and after what would turn out to be Hazard's best performing season for Chelsea last season when he got 31 league goal contributions a clutch performance in a European final to essentially see Chelsea through to lift the trophy Chelsea fans eventually gave Hazard their blessing too. The transfer was made, Chelsea got a really really good deal, I mean you know he's turning 29, he only had 12 months left in his contract, uh, they got a lot of money for him considering and on his presentation, his first press conference, Hazard said a lot of really nice things about Chelsea, how he got emotional watching the videos and how he does not regret leaving Chelsea any sooner, how he think it all happened perfectly and he thanks the club and the fans. So. Generally, it kind of had a happy ending for everyone, but it's interesting to find out that this was actually agreed after the World Cup. And that whole season when he was playing well for Chelsea, he basically knew the agreement was in place and it wasn't the following summer that the deal was done. Right then, the next story is sourced by The Athletic, or the information is about how Chelsea, if they get the ban lifted in January, how they will be looking to strengthen free positions potentially. Now, before we talk about those positions and what it could mean for certain players and I don't know, maybe even targets, let me explain how this is not abnormal. A lot of clubs who receive transfer bans, it, it's usually a 12 month term, so it's two windows. Often, if they accept it and don't challenge it too much, they get, it's almost like a, when you go to prison, you can get a reduced sentence for good behavior. So you can often get the second window lifted upon appeal. So Chelsea went through the summer, no transfers, although they still somehow signed Kovacic and had Pulisic arrive. So it didn't really feel like a transfer ban at all, especially with all the lone kids coming back. Really, Chelsea didn't feel it at all. And then the following window, so January in this case, in the winter, they can maybe have transfers again. Now, this is still theoretical and it's just a sort of hypothetical because 
obviously we're not at January yet we don't know what the situation is but I wanted to basically put it to you guys that this is not abnormal this actually happens quite a lot so who are they saying or rather what positions are they saying Chelsea are looking to strengthen in the winter like I said it's three positions and those positions are center half a winger and the center forward now if you look at this Chelsea side, there's no obvious weakness, really. I mean, really. And maybe these targets would have made a lot more sense last summer when they knew the transfer ban was in, but if you had to speculate certain positions that need to be strengthened, maybe you'd say those. This is an interesting report because I guess I understand winger, maybe centre half, but striker, really? Chelsea have three strikers. And it depends. Are they looking for a number one? I mean, we're going to go through these in a second, but I thought they might go for left back or right back or something. Or maybe just a full back, you know? Obviously, Reese James coming in and looking like he's going to do the business with Aspliquet is still only 30 and can rotate. Mark Alonso coming back into form and Emerson also having been great for Chelsea for the last sort of eight months. Maybe the four fullbacks at Chelsea at present can stay at Chelsea. The Athletic is a reputable platform, so I wanted to report on this information. So let's go through the positions and talk about what that might mean and if it really makes sense. Let's start with centre half. Um, Chelsea have four centre halves at the moment, or five if you if you count Mark Gerhi as well. So they've got. Rudiger, which is a top tier centre back and should absolutely stay at the club. You've got Tomori, who seems to be first choice at the moment for Frank Lampard, so already you're thinking, right, centre back partnership. But then you've got Zuma, who's come back into form and is playing excellent recently. And of course, you've got Andreas Christensen, who everyone knows is a very talented footballing centre half, and he's very young, and again, he's another academy product. And you've got Mark Gerhi, who's been on the bench recently, and the club rate him very, very highly, so already has five centre halves for Chelsea Football Club. I mean, none of them are really, really old as well. The senior one is Rudiger, and what's he, 25 years old, 26 years old or something? The rest are really young. So does centre half make it... Any sense for me? Probably not. I know people say, oh, we need that one elite, you know, centre back, maybe buy like a Van Dyke, a Kula Bali, and then you're like sorted, right? To be honest, I don't think it's necessary at all, and it would probably be a huge waste of money, my opinion. Next up, let's talk about centre forward striker. Now, again, for me, this is a difficult one. It does look like Olivier Giroud is out of favour and he's still an elite striker in many ways and obviously if he's going to play number 9 for France in the Euros, he needs to be playing football. So say it theoretically Chelsea get rid of Giroud, now that kind of makes sense, I'm a huge fan of Giroud, his short time at Chelsea has been awesome, I think he's actually been become a bit of a cult hero in many ways, especially after the Europa League final and you know he won the FA Cup with Chelsea as well. But stylistically, let's be honest, man, when you see him on the pitch when he's playing for Frank Lampard in Frank Lampard's system, he really does look like he's struggling Olivier Giroud and it doesn't really look like it suits him. So I get it. Maybe Chelsea sell Giroud, but Batshuayi looks like he wants to be here. And Frank Lampard looks like he really likes Batshuayi. He scored a couple of goals off the bench. Obviously a really important goal at Ajax. And it looks like he's still got that in his locker. Tammy Abraham is Chelsea's number nine. And that's undisputed at the moment. So why would Chelsea need a striker? Would they be looking to bring a third striker in? Well, if you ask me, the third striker spot should be reserved for a young academy player. What, maybe like an 18-year-old, like a sort of Mason Greenwood at United. Or what Tammy Abraham should have been a few years ago. Well, maybe that's not fair because loans, you know, served him well. But you get what I'm saying. Maybe bring more kid in and may have him deputising. What's the point in spending money on some European striker that might have a bit of an ego, might want to play number one or, you know, just sits on the bench and is a waste of money? You catch my drift? And finally, the winger position. Now, this is a difficult one as well, right? But maybe, maybe this makes the most sense. Firstly, if you look at terms of investment, and I mean that in investment in... in transfer fee with Christian Pulisic and I mean that with investment with Callum hudson Adoy's new big contract where they nursed him back to health, they fought away Bayern and they invested a lot of their emotion and work in keeping him at the club. You'd think there you've got two starting wingers, you're both young, they both can play uh, Frank Lampard's football and they're the future. 
Of course, you've also got someone like Willie Andy seems to be the swan song, although his contract is up at the end of the summer, as is Pedro. There was serious talk about a Willie Andy contract extension, maybe up into two years, which, if Frank Lampard really, really likes him and likes his work ethic and industry, might make sense. But it does look like Pedro might be out of favour and he's probably going to be gone in the summer, if not him and Willie. And so, that would leave Chelsea with two starting wingers, maybe Mount if you can play him on the wing as well. So suddenly you're thinking, yeah, maybe bring in a winger. But what do they do? Do they bring in a top tier high profile winger like Jadon Sancho, who I did a video on, he's a Chelsea fan and he's really good mates with Callum Hudson-Odoi and might fancy coming back to London. But what does that mean? Does that mean he'll be wanting to start again? Christian Pulisic will be like, oh God, not again, Sancho has come back to haunt me twice. And how does the rotation work? Or do they buy a talented young up and coming winger to sit on the bench and just challenge them slowly and do some rotation? Regardless, if you think about the numbers, that would make sense the most, a winger rather than a centre half or a centre forward for me. My opinion on all of this is, Chelsea shouldn't buy in January. They've got a decent enough squad and really, Frank Lampard should take a whole season and evaluate his squad and be like, right, now I can have an educated opinion on where to strengthen on. Do you see what I mean? Rather than wasting money in January. And let's not forget, January transfer fees are cranked right up because it's that kind of window where everyone pays more mid-season. Unless there's like an injury crisis and Chelsea really are doing bits in the Premier League and the Champions League and things are going absurdly well and maybe Liverpool and City have both dropped points and Chelsea could even go for the title. For me, it seems a bit pointless in a way. But I want to get your guys' opinion, so get down in the comments below and let me know how you feel about this situation. What do you think about the Hazard story? What do you think about the transfer ban potentially being lifted in January and strengthening in those positions, so say if the Athletic. If you've enjoyed the video, remember to like the video guys and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And if you want to join the Discord server, you can do in the Patreon link in the description below. And you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. That's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby